The threat of global warming melting polar ice caps is well known by now. In the United States, scientists point to milder winters with things like slowing maple syrup production in the Northeast as evidence of climate change. But some say that example could pale in comparison to future risks that are on the scale of destruction New Orleans experienced with Hurricane Katrina. It's time to stop debating the science and really beginning to protect people uh, that are at risk from this kind of phenomenon. Phil Clapp is the president of the National Environmental Trust, a nonpartisan science and policy group. The group has come up with worst case scenarios of the effects of climate change on cities at risk of rising sea levels and strong storms. High on the list, New York. You have most of the areas of the financial district in southern New York, in the southern end of Manhattan, flooded. Clapp says both New York City airports could be underwater in the event of a Category 2 hurricane with a sea level rise of about two feet. In Washington, D.C., if there was a strong storm along the Potomac, the area stretching from the mall to the White House lawn could be at risk. This is a rather large flooding event uh, for Washington, and there would be a lot of destruction uh, to national monuments in the morning. Miami, especially South Beach, could see severe flooding, and so could Boston's financial and historic areas. On the West Coast, the worst-case scenario calls for the San Francisco Bay to expand and make Sacramento a bay city. These models are projected for the later half of the century. Many scientists say stopping all carbon emissions now won't reverse the effects of climate change completely. The real debate is uh, we have some global warming that's going to continue regardless of anything we do. Uh, but then we have worst case scenarios which, if we carry on with our business as usual kind of approach, are really very, very serious.